It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Jess Jacqueline and her grandfather, Harry Davidson. And welcome to WNAV. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We're sorry Thank you, Donna. All right, I'm going to read something off your website, the website for the film that we're about to discuss. And this is what you wrote. Over Thanksgiving dinner about four years ago, my grandfather confessed a deep concern of his. His warning were specific to the menhaden fish, a species crucial to the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem. At the time, I had never heard of menhaden. My life in New York felt far away from the Chesapeake Bay and my fond memories crabbing with my grandpa. As a kid, he was always telling, telling us stories and performing his many stories about the life of a waterman. These songs were reserved for my family and usually did not occur further than my grandfather's front porch carport on Ken Island, Maryland. After the holiday, I returned to New York to find my grandpa had mailed me a 10-page letter, front and back, in perfect cursive writing, and it is, I've seen it, it's on your website, including diagrams of the bay, the Menhaden and song lyrics. In this letter, he outlined his concerns about the overfishing in the Chesapeake Bay, and soon after, he let me know that he would decide to perform his music live for the first time at the unexpected age of 88, a last attempt to advocate on behalf of the home we love so dearly. A few months later, I was back in Maryland with a film crew ready to start production. As an older waterman, Starting out on the bay in 1947, Harry has witnessed many things, and his testimony and his concerns are expressed through his lyrics. Waterman is a tribute to his legacy and the voices of those who love the Chesapeake Bay and also hope that one day it will be restored. That's an amazing piece of writing. It's an amazing concern of yours, Harry. How did you become so concerned about Menhaden? What are, for those that don't know, what is Menhaden? Well, the Menhaden is the is the number one major fish of the rockfish, and we all know what the rockfish is. And uh, what's happened uh, is the general public who love the bay so much, they are, are uh, in my opinion. Are, are are missing the uh, a, a, a big factor between uh, the Manhattan and the oyster. Now everybody's in love with the oyster, and uh, they claim an oyster uh, filters the bay, which they do. But an oyster, uh, compared to a man uh, to a Manhattan, uh, doesn't swim, and uh, a Manhattan swims. And uh, that the common sense to tell you that uh, one man hating swimming will, will uh, filter more in the bay than an oyster sitting still. So uh, that's what I love to get in the general public's mind. If you think it over, the man hating uh, swim and the oysters don't. But uh, are there feeder fish for everything that we? Well, they are. Well, the second thing, yes. Also, the only feed that the rock they need protein, and they they get it from the uh, manhaden. They do not get it from what they're eating now. They've turned to soft crabs, and uh, I cannot stress more of the importance of the manhaden. They should they should never catch one of them. I think they should be free for everything except one thing, and that's the commercial watermen who catch them for bait. And that uh, amount is so small that it wouldn't affect anything at all. When I started fishing in 1948, it was impossible for my brother and I to go fishing or anybody else without in our uh, upper bay area uh, around Canal, Timonau, all up there in uh, Swan Point. It was impossible to fish without catching a dozen or more of Manhattan. They were so thick, and the rockfish were thicker because they had food. Uh, you take the uh, corn away from chickens, and what are they going to eat? So uh, in the last five years or more, I started noticing I hadn't caught a Manhattan this year. From Tillman Island on up, there are no big manhaden they uh the rockfish need the large ones they catch uh, the small ones down in the virginia omega and the sports riders who mean very well 
are claiming that there are millions of uh, men hating in the upper bay. Well, they're right, but they're so small, they're the ones that get through the net. And they're waiting for them to grow so they can catch them and make an official out of them. So now for those that don't know, around the Middle Bay to the lower part of the Chesapeake Bay, you've had an industry that keeps getting bigger and bigger. That is commercial fishing of Menhaden with big boats. Yes? Yes, right. And uh, that's Omega. Omega, Omega uh -huh. which is they the company spot them. that... They, the most uh, selfish thing that a, a, a person can do, whether you're an environmentalist or not, to uh, spot them with... Uh, planes because they're known to group together and then they drop a net on them they don't have a chance it's a cowardly thing to do they only have around 350 people working they're putting millions of watermen out of work jess along comes you you grew up here in maryland on the eastern shore you are a filmmaker that lives in brooklyn and you heard your grandfather's story you saw this letter this unbelievable letter that he wrote to you he makes m music explaining this and you felt what yeah exactly right so we were sitting together and what he just told you he told me at the time uh, i hadn't heard of menhaden and i think something that really stuck with me after researching a little bit more was that we don't eat menhaden so they're the primary diet of what we do eat but we don't see them in a market anywhere right. so i think that's part of the outreach is just educating people about what this fish is because most people, even people that live on the Chesapeake Bay have never heard the word, uh, myself included. So um, yeah, so at that time I felt really compelled to bring this story to more people um, and also through the lens of my grandfather's music, it just fe it felt like a really good way of, you know, adding a personal touch to something that might just feel like more clinical, a scientific documentary. I thought through him, and and he, he's a storyteller, right. it would be, you know, a great way to kind of bring it to light and so I started filming him and he decided that he wanted to take his music beyond just my small family audience to uh, the Waterfowl Music Festival. He worked really hard. He went to the studio. He was learning, taking guitar lessons, you know, at it's, 88 years old. All right, hold that thought because we have to take a break. But when we come back, let's talk about the music and the, the next generation artist that's putting the movie together. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Jess Jacqueline. She's a uh, New York-based filmmaker. And her grandfather, Harry Davidson, he's an 88-year-old waterman from Ken Island. And the two of them are working on a project together documenting Harry's appeal to people to learn more about the Menhaden, why they're so important to their Chesapeake Bay ecosystem. And you've become a performer. You've started, you wrote songs to explain why it's the fish being overfished, overharvested is not a good idea for our Chesapeake Bay. And Jess, you've put a movie together about it. Uh, when did you start performing your music live? Uh, about uh, three, three or four years ago, I guess. Jess, were yeah. you there for the first yeah. show? Um, so yes, yeah, so the first, well, the very first performance you did, I think if we made live the Waterfowl Festival would have been last year. Um, and somehow I was, audience, I was but, there and I missed it. Now I'm really upset that I yeah. missed it. Well, are you going to be back there this year performing again? Yeah, well, you want to do this year? Except Jesse. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're the manager on the road crew. Yeah. You're the roadie. Started, um, <laughs> if he ha see if he finds a show he wants to play, usually my aunt or myself will call and try. It. We're, we've become his booking agents too in this process. Nice. He likes okay. to, yeah. So uh, Harry, you never <laughs> played a guitar before, or you did? No, I, I really picked it up when I was 50 years old, and <laughs> uh, but uh, it took me uh, that long to learn three chords. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, are you musical? Yeah. I'm not. It's definitely in our family. My brother's a musician, uh, but no, I, I never learned how to play anything. Uh, but, you know, I did grow up around music. He was always performing for us, you know, like at our demands, play Black Duck or play, you know, we knew a couple of his favorite songs. So, um, yeah, I grew up with it, but never myself. Okay, so you received this 10-page cursive letter, mm -hmm. um, and your first thought was, I need to turn this into a film, because you, you do have this artistic gene. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, 
You know, what's interesting is I sort of became a documentary filmmaker in the process of just wanting to get the story of my grandfather down. At the time, I was more producing things, and I hadn't really set out to do my own project yet. And really, the, that first nugget of inspiration was just, I want to get his story down, and so I want to figure out how to do it. And the project grew from there. That was four years ago. Um, so this is my premiere. This is the first thing I've ever made that's gone to festivals that's showing to an audience. So. Is this a short or how long is the film? This is a short okay. that we intend to make into a feature. Okay. But we're, we're showing the short film to you know, generate interest, hopefully bring some more funding to the project and finish out something longer. And this did just have its premiere at the DC Shorts Film Festival in September. How'd that go? Yeah, it was great. Well received? Yeah, it was well received. Standing ovation for my grandfather. Uh, you're, you, so you're a rock star and now a film star. Is it what's next on your list of to-dos? What you're, is you're, next? Yeah, what's next? Now well, that you've conquered I, I like to, just to keep on uh, in the tempo of what's going on now. and uh, Make sure people know about yeah, the importance of the men who going. Yeah. Yes. You uh, did work on a new album. Because I've had a, a lot of wonderful feedback from uh, 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 so many people that I know and, and so many people that I do not know. And you put them all together, then maybe they'll, uh, uh, you know, think about the men more and get them back. And so the film will, will be at Chesapeake Film Festival in Easton in October. Is That's it right. The, yes. sh the shorter. It's, it's the short film. Okay, yes. so you're not at the whole. The whole thing is not done yet. It's a process. It's a process. It's yes. a long process. Yes. For those that don't know, making a movie isn't about just uh, going into studio or filming a few scenes and it's done. It takes a long time. Oh, it also takes money. Where can people uh, find out more about the film and perhaps donate? Yeah, sure. So watermanfilm.com. Uh, you'll see a lot of information about Menhaden, about the film, about my grandfather's music. It's all there. Um, and yeah, if you're interested, please get in contact with me. I'm looking for, you know, the next uh, help with the next step. So funding, I'm trying to raise funding, generate interest, uh, figure out who might be interested in the story and want to help bring it, you know, to light. Perfect. We're going to take another short break. When we come back, more about Harry's music and Jess's film. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. This is Donna Cole. I am in the studio with the absolutely amazing Harry Davidson, an 88-year-old waterman from Kent Island who's made it his mission to educate the public about the importance of Menhaden and what it does for the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem. And his granddaughter, Jess Jacqueline, who is a Brooklyn-based filmmaker who's putting this all on the big screen for everyone to know Harry and the story of the Medhaden. So Harry has a CD out. His music is also on iTunes. The CD is called The Songs of the Working Watermen of the Chesapeake. And uh, there's 17 titles on it, ranging from Long John to My Daddy Said I Would, to Wild Goose, to Bulldozers, Boats, and Women. Bulldozers, Boats, and Women. Those are three subjects you know well? Yes. All three? Very well. <laughs> so, tell me what making a movie with your grandfather is like. Uh, he's actually the ideal subject. You know, in the, in the 50s, he was filming on an 8 millimeter small camera. And so I took this footage and, you know, digitalized it because I wanted to show... You know, I always say it's one thing to hear people talk about what the bay used to look like and you hear people say it, but when you see it and you see how many fish were there and how abundant and it was just uh, really, really amazing. Cool. So, uh, but one funny thing I discovered was that he was doing, t I think he always kind of secretly, I don't know if he'll admit to this, wanted to be an actor a little bit because he was doing <laughs> takes. Know, like he would know, set the camera up, he'd walk in yeah. front of it he would do a sequence and then he would do it again. And so when I was watching the footage, I thought he looks like he's making an old John Wayne movie here or something. Um, so I think that uh, he's very comfortable on camera and uh, very genuine and uh, very passionate. So for me, it's just, it's easy because there's a co we're comfortable with each other. And um, yeah, he's, he's good so, on camera. So Harry, you don't mind your granddaughter following you around with a camera? Oh no. No, she does an excellent job, and uh, you know it's uh, she, she. She made a great film. You know, I was it was better than Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> Are do you still work on the water? Are you still fishing? Yeah, yeah. I'm going tomorrow. Did I am I, am I holding you up today from? Oh no, no, no. Just crabs or no, oysters? I have a too? nephew, Johnny Davidson, who was uh, you know one of the best uh, rock fishers. Uh, Fishermen uh, on the Chesapeake Bay, and uh, you know we uh, talk, and uh, you know he uh, 
He has uh, some great days, Johnny, Johnny Davidson. Mm -hmm. And so you fish for just rockfish or crabs, oysters for all of it? Yeah. All of it. Mm -hmm. And which, yeah. what's your favorite seafood to eat, just out of curiosity? Well, the rockfish don't taste like they did used to. How's See, that? they're eating crabs now. So you think even the taste of the seafood oh, has been affected and by the lack of... they don't give you the fight that they had when they... Uh, it's been five years now. They've slowed up. Now, I'm talking mostly about the rockfish in the upper bay. Right. Down in the lower bay, you see uh, some of those big elwives get through the nets. Mm -hmm. And the rockfish down there stay there because uh, uh, they're more healthy. And it's a lot of people who don't, uh, you know, realize this. They have to be uh, probably from Tillman on to Swan Point to know what's going on with all the cricks and, you know, the, the uh, Manhattan, the big Manhattan, right. uh, which they uh, get about uh, eight inches or maybe a little more. Uh, uh, and the rockfish need them. What's your hope for Maryland and Virginia both to stop it completely? Stop or? it completely. Okay. It's, it is, see. There you it's go. It's insanity. You've got to stop and think about it. They're it, taking the food away from the, more, the in my opinion, the most uh, important uh, sport fish in the world is the rockfish. They're way above the marlin and everything. And they're That's taking, why they're going away from here. You know, you don't uh, you hear about them like you used to. You know, they're weakening the whole species. It's got to be stopped you, entirely. And do you think it's going to be a tough fight fighting no, against them? I don't them? think so. You don't think? I think. Said once it catches on, they're gone, Omega, because yeah. they, uh, they've got to learn their ignorance. And Jess, you feel the same? Um, yeah. Well, yes and no. I do think uh, the Omega fishery is unique in that it's being managed by the General Assembly of Virginia and not by fishery management. So right. there is a political... Uh, there's a lot of politics in Virginia and lobbying and, and money. Sure, it's a lot. It's making it's contributing a lot of money to the um, Virginia economy. I think it's 88 million dollars. So I, I do think that we we have our work cut out for us in in terms of dealing with things on that side of it. But if people know, um, people that are making the decisions and voting for certain politicians understand uh, what it's doing to the bay, I think that we could we could get them out of there. I think have it's possible. You, have you filmed the the boats fishing for it? I've been out there a few times. They like to fish at hours where it's difficult to find them. They're not usually out there on the weekends. So um, I haven't been able to, but it's a goal of mine to get out and, you know, get and that boat. I've, I've licensed some footage, but I haven't myself filmed it. Do you have a list of people that you still want to interview, whether in Virginia or Maryland? To yeah, I've gotten quite a few interviews, including some with politicians in the area. Uh, but I do have a few more to do for the longer piece and, you know, more. I do need to get more, but... Okay, one more time on the website for your film. Yeah, it's watermanfilm.com. And one more time, Harry, where p can people find your music? W if they want to see your music or see you perform? or uh, Donna, they can uh, find it, that number on the card. It's on the back of the card if, okay. you, if you want to give them that number. It's also songs for Chesapeake Bay Waterman right. com or you the number that number. Or the number is nine seven three six four one one five five four. Jess is laughing because I'm guessing that goes to you and you're the booking agent. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, it's my aunt's number. Yeah, but yeah well, well you'll get a hold of us. It's All great. right, very <laughs> good. What what did I miss here? Jess um, um, I I just thought maybe you'd want to tell Donna a little bit about catching rockfish that are full of crabs and why you think that's happening. I think it's sort of an interesting anecdote. Uh, well, uh, there's been so many reports, I'll say, in the last five years of, uh, of fishermen. They have pictures of them, and uh, John Davidson is uh, one of them. Uh, he told me he had a picture. He had uh, 15 soft crabs and a 20-inch rockfish. And, uh, and believe it or not, just the other day, a shorty uh, who's uh, at the Kenton Ayers, uh, he told me this was just two weeks ago that he just caught, he didn't say how big that fish was, but it had to be 20 inches because that's legal. And it had a, a uh, he said he must have just ate the crab. It was a live uh, soft crab and that he uh, cleaned the soft crab and ate it before he ate the rockfish. They wonder why it's a shortage of crabs. You're, You're talking about the entire food chain being affected right, right now. So uh, that's evidence enough. I mean, you've got uh, their primary diet just isn't available to them. So they're eating crabs and um, yeah, and you'll see maybe between five and eight baby crabs in the belly of a rockfish. Mm. So it's uh, yeah. it's scary. It really is scary yeah. when you think about the long term because mm -hmm. you're taking off the bottom portion of this food chain. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect the top. Yeah, totally. 
I can't thank you both enough for joining me today, Harry, Jess. Thank you so much. Well, it's certainly great. thank you, Donna. It's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here with uh, a, a beautiful woman <laughs> that's on the radio. <laughs> She should be seen. Thank you. (laughs) This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week. 